So a few months ago, we deleted the 7700K, which I've been using in my main build for quite some time now. And we saw a huge drop in temperatures when the CPU was under load, 16 degrees C to be exact. This meant that I was able to overclock a little bit further because I had some more headroom in terms of temperatures and voltage. Fast forward to now and we've got this 8600K here, which can hit 5.3 gigahertz at 1.38 volts. But let's see if we can hit 5.4 by deleting and pushing those overclocks a little bit further. For those who don't know what deleting is, it's where we separate the CPU itself from the heat spreader. Now, we achieve two main things when doing this. Firstly, we can replace the crappy thermal compound that's originally there with something a little bit more premium, and in this case, we'll be using liquid metal, specifically Thermal Grizzly Conductonaut. And secondly, we can reduce the distance between the IHS and the CPU die by being a little bit more conservative with our silicon glue application when resealing. If we do both correctly, we should see a significant decrease in temperatures under CPU load. So I've modeled and 3D printed this basic de tool, which is available on my store, which you can find in the description below. The basic idea is that we're locking down the CPU into this socket and then applying a shearing force by tightening the bolt onto the second part. Eventually the IHS just slides off and we have a naked CPU, revealing the original glue and thermal compound, which are now going to be removed. I'm trying to get as much of the glue off as I can, but trying not to scratch the PCB and damage the CPU. Remember to clean the bottom of the IHS as well, and now we're ready to apply the liquid metal. Now, you wanna cover the entire CPU die, but not so much that it's actually gonna spill off the sides and short the components on the edge. You also wanna apply a thin layer on the bottom of the IHS as well, as this will help with the contact between the die and the heat spreader. Lastly, we need to reseal the IHS onto the CPU. And to do this, you'll want to use a high strength glue, which is rated for high temperatures as well. I'm using the relid tool that I've designed here, but you can also lock down the CPU into your motherboard socket, and that'll work just fine since it's applying enough pressure. Okay, so now let's have a little bit of fun with the 8600K. I've already ran some tests at 5.3 gigahertz, which it was stable at prior to the D-lid, and we've got some pretty significant temperature reductions as well. But now let's see if we can hit 5.4. I first tried 1.4 volts, but this just wasn't enough to maintain stability under load. But after bumping it up to 1.45 volts, it was no problem at all. I had all six cores running at 5.4 gigahertz and at decent temperatures as well. If this isn't winning the silicon lottery, then I don't know what is. This is just an insanely fast chip. Cinebench was posting consistent scores above 1300 with the highest score at 1314. The D-Lid was extremely successful as well when we're talking about temperatures, with an improvement of around 20 degrees C both at stock and when the 8600K was overclocked to 5.3 gigahertz. All temperatures here have been adjusted for a 20 degree ambient temperature, so just keep that in mind. And at stock, we're seeing load temperatures of 47 degrees and this yielded almost dead silent performance. Stepping all the way up to 5.3 gigahertz, and we're seeing very respectable temperatures at 60 degrees C under full load. And even all the way up to 5.4 gigahertz at 1.45 volts, the 8600K is still barely warm at 64.5 degrees. Now, I got a little greedy and tried 5.5 gigahertz as well. And with the voltage all the way up to 1.49 volts, we unfortunately couldn't pass any Cinebench runs. Still though, the fact that I even booted at that speed is pretty insane. And Hardware Info and CPU Z confirm this speed as well. Now, 5.4 gigahertz is pretty mental, but I'm gonna be honest with you guys. In gaming, you're not really gonna see a difference with a six core chip like this going above 4.8 or 4.9 gigahertz you're much better off dialing back the voltage and clock speed and having a cooler and quieter system. That's even if you can reach five gigahertz in the first place, as the silicon lottery still plays a huge role in determining how far you can go in terms of clock speed. For example, I've seen some other reviewers with the 8600K barely reaching 4.8 gigahertz even after de-litting. So the fact that we're able to reach 5.4 gigahertz on this thing is pretty insane. And this has to be one of the fastest overclocks on a Coffee Lake system without liquid nitrogen. As always guys, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Drop your comments down below and I will see you all in the next one.